Okay, great. So let's move on to estrogen. So estrogen deficiency. So these symptoms are typically found in women who are older than 45. They can be found in women who are younger if their adrenals and their thyroid are not picking up the slack. A lot of people don't realize that one of the functions of the adrenal gland is to produce sex hormones. So really the difference between someone who goes into menopause and has a problem and the person who doesn't has to do with um, how robust their adrenals are and consequently also their thyroid to support the adrenals so that it can take over the production of a lot of the sex hormones. Um, so, but this is mainly found in women who are older than 45 moving into menopause. So please mark all of the symptoms that you have. So hot flashes, and once again, the asterisk is indicative of the major symptoms that are associated with this deficiency. So hot flashes, vaginal dryness, problems staying asleep, pain with intercourse, and that's usually due to vaginal dryness, hair loss, and this is, you know, if, if we're working on thyroid and people's hair loss is not improving, then we move on to, um, to working on estrogen deficiency. Memory loss. In fact, there's a big correlation between low estrogen um, as, uh, and uh, Alzheimer's, early Alzheimer's, so very important component of that. Recurrent bladder infections. This has to do with the fact that there's some muscles on either side of the um, bladder neck coming out of the bladder, going out into the outside world that are estrogen sensitive, where if you don't have estrogen there, it causes that neck to kink and oftentimes that's when women will get recurrent bladder infections or they will, um, they'll have stress incontinence where they'll laugh or they'll sneeze and they will dribble. Depression, joint stiffness, light or absent, absent menses or periods, weight gain, and then of course fatigue. So the tests that you can do are the Fix Your Fatigue blood panel, um, or the female hormone panel, and that's that blood spot panel. And once again, this is all um, at the top of this, this document. You'll see where you can go to get these tests. Um, and then the Dutch sex hormone profile. So this is a urine test, which is especially important if you're taking hormone replacement therapy. So bioidentical hormones, um, estrogen creams, estrogen um, tinctures, stuff like that, you're going to want to do the urine test because it is most accurate. And then laboratory data is going to be low estrogen on blood or urine laboratory value. And in my experience, it's very likely that someone has estrogen deficiency if they have three or more of the above symptoms, including one of the symptoms with an asterisk. And this can be corroborated by low estrogen levels in blood or urine, but not necessary if symptoms are significant. So if somebody has, you know, three of these symptoms and their laboratory tests are fine, I'm still most likely going to treat them for low estrogens because it's going to change the quality of their life and their body is screaming at me to do something about it, you know. So it's, um, it's important always to listen to the subjective experience of the individual, of yourself, you know, and remember that if you're experiencing it, even if it's not showing up on the lab, that um, it still is something that needs to be remedied. So urinary testing is more accurate than blood. Then if you felt like you had this cause, you would mark it off and then mark it off on page two as well.